the International Space Station's Expedition 40 crew members share an affinity for exploration on this planet, but they're also eager to take up the challenge of setting the stage for future exploration off the planet. Dr. Steve Swanson was born in Syracuse, New York, and moved with his family a number of times before ending up in Steamboat Springs, Colorado, as he entered his teens. It's a beautiful place. I love the mountains. I love the area. And uh, when I grew up there, it was definitely like a half agricultural ranching community and half resort. And it was a great combination. He stayed at home for college, got his Bachelor's of Science in Engineering Physics at the University of Colorado, but then went to Florida Atlantic University to get his Master's of Applied Science in Computer Systems. At that point, he considered his options, and the job of astronaut seemed to have what he was looking for. After a year working as an engineer in Phoenix, he got a job as an engineer at the Johnson Space Center's Aircraft Operations Division, working on the shuttle training aircraft while earning his doctorate in computer science from Texas A&M. He was chosen for the astronaut program in 1998 and made his first flight in 2007 on a mission to deliver a truss segment to the International Space Station. Swanson made two spacewalks on that mission and two more on a 2009 shuttle flight that delivered another truss segment to outfit the station to perform its mission. We're going off now. We're trying to get uh, science better. We're also trying to find maybe a, a place that we could go to uh, to maybe you know get resources off the moon. We could go explore the Mars. All these kind of ideas are things I think uh, as human nature we just have to do. Alexander Skvortsov was born in Shelkovo, near Moscow, because his father's job as a cosmonaut brought the family to Star City, a town with no maternity ward. But soon after his birth, Skvortsov's father left the cosmonaut corps, and the military took the family to Morshansk. And I still love the town, a very big, quiet river, a wonderful nature, wonderful forest, very good people. I like that town. And I have, um, there are a lot of people who graduated from high school with me. My classmates still live there. After high school, Skvortsov set out to fulfill his dream of being a cosmonaut, like his father. After he completed study at the Stavropol Air Force Pilot and Navigator School, he spent seven years in the National Air Defense Force before studying at the Military Red Banner Air Defense Academy. Skvortsov graduated the academy in 1997, the same year he was selected for the Cosmonaut Corps. He spent six months on the International Space Station in 2010, including serving as station commander for Expedition 24. After he returned to Earth, he finished his studies at the Russian Academy of Civil Service to become a lawyer, and he retired from the Air Force as a colonel in 2013. It is um, an enormous joy to look down to Earth, and we really want to um, see Earth always looking as beautiful as we see it from space, a blue planet with wonderful nature. Oleg Artemyev was born in Riga, the capital of Latvia, where his military officer father was stationed. But the family soon moved to Kazakhstan, to the town now known as Baikonur, when Artemyev was a small boy. Although he lived in the place where people were launched into space, he wanted to be a sailor. Cosmonauts? We always thought of cosmonauts as the people that we always have to go meet and greet. They would pull us out of um, the activities that we actually enjoyed and they would line us up along the road and make us wave little flags to greet them. After high school, Artemyev went off to train as a sailor. But when that didn't work out, he went to the Tallinn Polytechnic Institute and graduated into a job as an electrician, but soon left that to join the Soviet Army. After two years in the service, he went to Moscow and was admitted to the Bauman Technical University, where he earned a degree in low-temperature physics and technology. That got him a job at the Rocket Space Corporation Energia, where he worked building and testing space vehicles, including preparing the International Space Station's Zvezda module for launch. He was selected to start training as a cosmonaut in 2003. In 2009, he participated in the Mars 500 experiment, along with future cosmonaut Sergei Razansky, on his way to preparing for his first spaceflight assignment. I hope that um, my small contribution will help those who will eventually make a first step on the surface of Mars or touch an asteroid, bring something good back, maybe even 
see some yeah. extraterrestrial life. Работа There are a lot of uh, good jobs on Earth, but this is uh, the uh, ultimate. Max Surayev is the son of a Soviet Air Force officer. He was born in Chelyabinsk in the southern Ural region of Russia, north of Kazakhstan. But his family moved all over the country during his childhood. All along, he intended to become a military pilot. The idea of becoming a cosmonaut was just an extension of that idea. And I thought I'd give it a shot because uh, uh, the profession of uh, a military pilot is very similar to that of a cosmonaut. Making quick decisions, making right decisions, uh, something risky, something complicated, something challenging, something interesting, which brings uh, lots of pleasure if you manage. After high school in Noginsk, near Star City, Sarayev graduated from the Kasha Air Force Pilot School in the Crimea with a specialty in command tactical fighter aviation. Then he went to the Zhukovsky Air Force Academy to specialize in test and exploitation of aircraft and weapons systems. He applied to the Cosmonaut Corps and was selected the year before he finished at the Academy. And while training in Star City, he also graduated from the Civil Service Academy of Russia as a lawyer. Sarayev's first flight was a six-month tour on Expeditions 21 and 22 in 2009 and 2010, during which he completed one spacewalk. Although he retired from the Russian Air Force as a colonel in 2012, he continues to work for the cause of human space exploration. That's why we send humans in space, so that we move forward, so we may discover something in the future, maybe, maybe not in the so near future, but discovering some new worlds, new planets, something that will help us develop and move forward. U.S. Navy Commander Reed Wiseman grew up in the suburbs of Baltimore, Maryland, far enough away from the city to be able to enjoy nature, learn about the world, and make the most of the freedom and encouragement he got from his parents. And they always had boundaries, but it was exploration from the time I was born, you know, going to the lake with my brother, uh, learning on my own and figuring things out, and, and they gave me that, that freedom, and it was wonderful. Wiseman earned a Bachelor's of Science in Computer and Systems Engineering and a commission in the Navy through the ROTC at Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute. After flight training, he was assigned to an F-14 squadron and made two deployments to the Middle East during operations Southern Watch, Enduring Freedom, and Iraqi Freedom. During the second deployment, he was picked for the Navy's test pilot school. And later, while working at the Patuxent River Naval Air Station, he also earned a master's degree in systems engineering from Johns Hopkins. Wiseman made two more international deployments before he was picked for the astronaut program in 2009 and got the chance to resume the exploration he loved as a child. We are curious, we are inquisitive, we are explorers by our very nature. And right now, the biggest exploration that a human can go on is 250 miles up on the space station. So to me, there's not even a question. Of course it's worth the risk. Just to go out there and push humanity to further than we've been, that's, that's a no-brainer. Dr. Alexander Gerst was born in Kunzelsau, a small town in rural south-central Germany. He liked being close to nature and looking up at the night sky, and his curiosity was piqued when his grandfather talked to people all over the world on his amateur radio. One day he somehow managed to adjust his antenna such that it would actually broadcast to the moon. And uh, he gave me the microphone and let me speak a few words into the radio. They would bounce back from the surface of the moon and about two and a half seconds later I would hear my own words in the radio, knowing as a six-year-old that they were just on the moon. So it was impossible for me to grasp in the beginning. Gerst started his exploration focused on this planet and earned a diploma in geophysics from the University of Karlsruhe in Germany while also getting his master's in earth sciences from Victoria University in New Zealand while working there developing new volcano monitoring techniques. He made four scientific missions to study volcanoes in Antarctica while working on his doctorate in natural sciences at the Institute of Geophysics at the University of Hamburg. And during that time, he made good on a promise to himself that he would make at least one sincere effort to become an astronaut. He was selected for the Astronaut Corps by the European Space Agency in 2009, 
finished his Ph.D. the following year and has been focused ever since on his chance to be part of what he calls the first wave. Being the first, well, wave of explorers on the way out exploring the universe uh, to moon, asteroids, Mars and beyond, uh, that is for me such an important thing to do for, for humankind, for science.